Hey guys, Jenna here. Welcome to my channel where I take you on tours of tiny homes and unique homes. In today's video, we're gonna meet one man who started from humble beginnings building a tiny house in his backyard and now has become a true champion for the tiny house movement, building hundreds of homes over the past seven years. We'll get an inside look at his workshop, take a tour of a few of his finished tiny homes, and check out the tiny house village that he's developed on his property. So how did a guy who came from nothing end up with a tiny house empire? Well, let's find out. And if you like these kind of videos, make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you know every time I post a new video. Hi, my name is Randy Jones and I own Incredible Tiny Homes. Really, it started in 2008 when the big crash hit the United States and really the world. I actually had a, a log cabin resort and lost it all in 09, finally went out. So I did everything I could to make ends meet for the last you know, five years between there. My wife was saying, hey, you know what? They're building tiny homes for $65,000. You know? And I said, my goodness, 65 grand? So I said, what can we do to build a tiny home for less than that? Because you could buy a, a farm here in East Tennessee for 65 grand back then. So I ended up building a tiny home for a friend of mine so then from there, I built another one, another one, and another one, and look where we're at. That's where we're at. But in my heart, I hear the call. So the number of homes we build per year probably range between 125 to, sometimes we just signed a contract with a, a developer of 50 more homes. So we're hoping we're gonna hit about 225 this year in 2022. We got a little under 50 employees now. It's just crazy. I mean, it started out with just me five or six years ago. Well, how we price structure everything here is we have certain models to choose from, but these models are custom, all right? You can customize these models in any way you'd like. And so we still offer a home at $20,000 like I started. And I hope to always offer a home at a really discounted price for somebody that needs something. Now, it doesn't have all the amenities in it, but we also build homes that are over $100,000. And everybody always says, you're selling them too cheap, too cheap. And there's just something about the tiny home industry that I don't think it should be super expensive. It should be affordable for everybody. Uh, young people starting out, people that are getting into retirement age. I've always seen if I can make a living and I can sell an affordable home that people can afford, it's going to be easier for them to buy from me instead of getting loans, all this stuff. And they're happy, I'm happy, and it's just a win-win for everybody. And behind me is our building that we build most of our homes in. We have 34 acres here in Newport, Tennessee. We started out in this location about three years ago. We've been in business about seven. We're starting to erect another portion of our building because we just need to build more homes. So inside, we got about 10 homes under construction. We've got about another 10 on the outside. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take you through a tour here and show you exactly what's going on in a tiny home factory. One man builds this entire house. Sometimes we have a, a team of two, but normally it's one to two men will build this house. This right here is a 30 foot, 10 by 30. He'll probably be on this about eight weeks, and then we get it out the door. Also, we build anything. So somebody might come to me and say, can you build a two-story tiny home? Can you build a, a hobbit home? And of course, you can see here's somewhat of a themed tiny home. Can you believe it? We use trees for rafters. We use live edge logs for window trim. And then we've also built our own circular doors. We take pride in the fact that our trailers are built very simple. A lot of tiny homes are overthought. I've always said the tiny homes are overbuilt. They think it through, they make it too complicated. So after over 700 homes that we've built in the last seven years, we figured out that it doesn't have to be as complicated. And we almost build them like you do a residential home. 
So you got metal, you got your floor joists, all your mechanicals are in the floor. And of course, now they're beginning to sheet it. And then you can see where we spray foam everything. This is a closed cell polyurethane spray foam. When I think of a tiny home, I don't think it should look like a box. I don't think it should look like a caboose. It shouldn't look like just a square figure, right? So right here you have it to where we try to make them look like a real home. This one actually has an eyebrow dormer, reverse gables, shed dormer. It's got siding, it's got bay windows, bump outs. This is like a big, massive home just shrunk down and has all the architectural value that a large home would have. Then the other new invention kind of that we come across is are called our ESP Tiny Homes. And this is an ESP, it's made out of steel panels. It's like old door remnants, but we actually take the scrap of a company who makes steel doors, they cut it out for the glass, they're gonna throw it away. We take that and we build homes with it. Super hour value rated, we've been doing it about a year. It's engineered strong. We've trucked them across the United States. We're able to build them faster and cheaper than our regular stick built homes. We could go on and on. I think we've got probably 50 homes here that are under construction, that are being built, finished up, tightened up. We got container homes, as you can see. It's like, where do we go? Where do you got? What do you want to see, right? So about two years ago, as we were selling our homes and on this 34 acres just building homes, we had a lot of people saying, hey, I don't know where to put my tiny home. I can't put it in my backyard, the zoning and everything where I live, they don't allow them. Do you have a place to put them? And I started thinking, I thought, well, we got 34 acres and I stand out here in the, in the middle of this woods and I said, you know what, if anybody wants to live here, I figured it up to be about $6,000 per lot. And I would say, hey, if you want to give me a deposit of $6,000, I'll give you two years free rent. You come here, that'll pay for the infrastructure. And then after that, you pay $200 a month to rent the lot. Well, we're now into our first year of their first free two years. And as you can see, we're sold out. And this is called the forest. Around me, as you can see, the homes walking up here, all the different colors. The homeowners are putting decks on them. They're putting skirting. Here's some folks here that live here. They work for us too. A couple from Maine, they moved down. They decorate for Christmas. All right, look at this place. All right, so this is 10 foot wide, 26 feet long, so it's 260 square feet. This is the living room. And I always stress to all of our customers when I'm designing your tiny home or when you're designing it, make sure that you leave a living room area. So they've got two beautiful Lazy Boy chairs. These are full-size Lazy Boy chairs, big screen TV, fireplace, and of course you can sell our beautiful decorations you got for Christmas, right? So then you got your other door that they've set up here on the side, you got their walkway. And then from there you go into their kitchen. Now their kitchen was a custom-made kitchen we built these right here in our shop. This is a full-size stove, all right? Full-size microwave. And then we've also got the panels on the door of the freezer. Let's see how we open this up. Oh yeah, all right? You can see all their food. But right here, you have these wood panels that match their cabinets, and that's a full-size fridge. Then you got a full-size drop-in farm-style sink. So everything here, you could have went to Lowe's or an appliance store, bought it here and put it in a tiny home. And look, we can still have two, three people pass by each other, right? It's very open and it doesn't give you that tiny cramped feel. So then we go from there, we go into the bathroom. There's your pocket door, which is great, right? Pocket doors are good from small spaces. Full size washer and dryer stackable unit. And then they've got a full size vanity, shower, toilet, and enough room in here to actually get around then from here which is really noticeable about this home is that the bedroom is upstairs and it's a full two-story home all right so before i go upstairs i wanted to show you a little bit what we've learned in the log cabin business and some other building we do so there's a bedroom up here as you can see and these are two little doors that go up and they serve as a couple functions they serve as well you can you know pass through something if you like but it also has airflow so air can get up and out. To the, to the right over here, we have a fan. And the fan, there's only one heating and air source, which is above the bathroom. And the air can blow through that door and out. And if there's 
still not enough airflow, we can turn the fan on and it brings this air into the bedroom, down the staircase, and it just keeps rotating. Over here, you got this beautiful staircase, and we try to make all our staircases custom because there is so much space in a staircase for storage. Now, I'm gonna go up the steps, and this is the loft. This is still 80 inches, but it still gives us about six foot two headroom up in the bedroom. All right, so here we are. We're in the bedroom here, the queen size bed. I bet you're probably wondering where's the closet. The closet is over here. They've got shelving, places to hang up their clothes. Of course, it's not a big walk-in closet. Here's the door that you've seen from down below. Allows the airflow, maybe even keeping the lights downstairs. It gives a little bit of light up here. I think this house is probably in the mid 70s, maybe 80,000 if that's it. I just can't get over it's a tiny home. So here we are at the beach community behind me. And we call it the beaches because in the future, we're gonna start planting frost resistant tropical plants here, bamboo, palm trees, all these different things that'll makes it look like the beach. It was actually built to be close together. So the home sites are only 30 by 40. And we encourage everybody to have their porches and decks out front. So it, it, it instills community awareness together, talking to your neighbor. And that's what the beach was all about. We were asked if we have Airbnbs on our communities, and we do have Airbnbs, we encourage Airbnbs. So behind me is a 10 by 20. It's a design that we come up with. We've sold about 40 of that particular model, but it's also one of our ESP panel homes. A lot of people come here and stay in this when we're getting ready to design or build their home, and they can stay here and see what it feels like to be in a tiny home. So let me show you inside. It has a full kitchen, full bathroom. And what we love about this particular design, it's 10 foot wide, only 20 foot long. But it has a full staircase that goes up. You can have a king size bed up here and you can have a pull out bed here. So it's a great Airbnb because you can sleep four folks. I live in a tiny home, been living in it for years. My biggest pet peeve is after years, these homes can start coming in on you. They're too small. You gotta step sideways to get through something. This here is a big enough room. It can accommodate up to six, seven adults easily and sit and not have a problem. In the kitchen, what I like about it is there's enough room for two people to pass. I've got a full sink. I got a cooktop, range hood, microwave. I got all the room that I need to function in a regular home. The only thing is, I took two steps from my living room to get here instead of walking down the hall, right? That's the only thing about a tiny home. I'm making less steps and I've got the same amenities. In the bathroom, we still have a full shower, a full toilet, you have a washer and dryer, closet, everything on this main floor, 200 square feet. So there was 160 acres across the street. We took in enough deposits to purchase the land, develop the land, and that's where we're at right now. So everything here is paid for, there's no debt, and now we're taking the infrastructure money and putting the infrastructure in. So when we get done right now, we're looking at 230 home sites and still got a waiting list. And sometimes you come up here and you can think, it's like just three years ago, there was nothing there but concrete and what I'm proud of is just the fact that it's, it's the American dream. I didn't have any money. I didn't have all any investors, no family money or anything. Just had a will, a desire, and a, and a passion to make something happen. And when, literally, when there's a will, there's a way. So everything you see there was built with no loans. It was a, it was a matter of, of just proving yourself to people and being honest and saying, hey, this is what I'll do. If you believe in me, this is what I'll, I'll make happen. And there were, our, there were several people that believed in what we could do, what I could do. And there you have it. You have 160 plus home sites, another 160 acres here. There's the Great Smoky Mountains in the distance. You don't have to have a lot to get a lot. So you can start at zero and you can start with a surplus. I started with a negative. All right, 
I had no materials. I had to borrow tools from a friend of mine. It was all I had. The first building I ever built with it was a sawzall and a skill saw. And I think I just want to make sure that everybody realizes that, that this came from nothing. And this is what happens when you work hard and you do what you promise and you do the best you can, you know, and this is what happened. Thanks for watching this week's video. Make sure that you subscribe and check back soon because we have another video coming out featuring one of the residents of the incredible tiny home village who lives in a shipping container home built by Randy.